I think we'll start this out with an example of what the hell the chain is going to have a task. Grab by the function. Qualifier. Yeah, we might be wrong. Well, in order to understand that, we need to understand the So which kind of level do you want? So now I can no longer get to my boogers. disappear on us please just come sit down and let's just sit all right thanks for sitting down thanks for not eloping um so we're let, let's go over the video of ethics here and we're going to redo kind of all of the things that were the non-exemplars so far um i mean the ones recorded in a bar yeah let's take a look so they hired me to do this curriculum, um, this Carl's Corporation Correction Curriculum thing. But I haven't even seen it. I don't know anything about it. They wanted to deliver the thing. So, and Stephen came to me and said, hey, can you pull this off? I'm like, of course I can pull it off. What the hell are you thinking? I know exactly everything. So I went online. I didn't find anything. I mean, they've got a website and they sell it, but no research, no nothing. It's all a bunch of I think there may have been an ethical violation, um, I've been told. <laughs> um, anyway, so um, I, th I think what we have here is an ethical violation, right? Um, I kind of missed it, um, It did uh, was which is hence the, anyway. Um, so what is it? Code 1.02 from the BACB, I believe is, oh, oh I'm sorry, no, 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 my, my bad, 1.01. 1. Um, so code 1.01 from the BACB, which is the reliance on scientific knowledge, I think. This is tricky. I haven't really memorized these things. But reliance on scientific knowledge. There we go. Um, so reliance on scientific knowledge. So Stephen or Carl's corporate curricu curriculum correction, whatever, um, clearly has absolutely you know, uh, no evidence to it. Um, it's you know something that's put together on the internet, um, and you know I you know there, these things are out there. They exist. There, there's all sorts of different programs out there that don't have any sort of evidence for them. I mean, it's possible that Psychor has one or two, um, but the point being is rather that you shouldn't be using them. They're not okay. Um, we need to use things that have evidence, right? So we have to be able to um, use programs that have been shown to be effective. Well, there's a little bit of a catch-22. How do you show that them to be effective without the evidence and blah, blah, blah. You know, you got to do the experiments to find out. You got to do the research to find out. But um, in this particular example, um, the Carl's Corporate Correction Curriculum or whatever it is, um, has clearly no evidence, which is why we said that, that there was none there. So, all right, let's go ahead and get back to this one. All right, here we go. I didn't even look at the curriculum. I just kind of pulled it out of my bum and I was like, I know what I can pull up. I know I can do this. We can just do the baseline assessment from here on out. So that's all I got to do is do that initial assessment. And then guess what? <laughs> I do believe I violated another one. And this time I am absolutely confident that it's 1.02. Boundaries of competence. So um, boundaries of professional competence, whatever. Anyway, the point being that um, I... In this example, I don't have the skills, right? So I'm talking about my ability to generalize based on my other experience, but I don't actually have the skills or the training I'm um, implementing this particular curriculum. Um, not even really sure in this example if I even have the skills um, to do the OBM type work in general because I'm literally saying, well, we're just going to grab a baseline and move on, right? Um, so the boundary of competence issue here is, and this is kind of a sticky one because uh, we, it, it is a, a touchy point in the field, and if you dig deep enough, you'll, you'll see that, but... Uh, people have to get trained, right? So, so I should have had some sort of sort of supervision. I should have been working with some other master behavior analyst um, that helped me implement these curriculums and gave me feedback and shaped me in the delivery of the OBM type work in order to ethically deliver this weird curriculum that we made up. Um, so, assuming that the curriculum was ethical in and to itself, um, which it's not because of 1.01, but you already saw that one. So anyway, um, that's really what this one was about. Um, so make sure, folks, that you um, have training if before you branch out into a new area, get the training or, or work along the, uh, along the way uh, with a, somebody that already has the experience um, so you can be trained properly. And now that we're done with all that, uh, let's just go back to the video. We can just do, do the baseline more. assessment from here on out. So that's all I gotta do. And then guess what? I can get paid 500 bucks a day. Isn't that crazy? Can't believe you forgot one of four, two of one, 206, 801, and 805! Alright, fine. I do. Ah! <laughs>
I've <laughs> too many of these things. Uh, all right, folks. So, so there's a couple of more ethical violations here, as you might imagine. Um, so the first thing is uh, 104, right? So integrity. So integrity is a bit of an issue um, in this particular one. So actually, we're, we're right there, right? So integrity. Um, so, so 104 is the integrity, and the, the idea being that I, clearly. All of this is lacking integrity. It's really hard to kind of pinpoint which particular piece. But I'm not being truthful. I'm not being honest. Everything that I'm telling my client, everything that I'm telling you in this video is basically a blatant lie. So um, the other one, 201, right? So uh, we're accepting clients. Um, <laughs> I'm accepting clients I probably shouldn't accept because I don't have any particular experience. And I'm not going over any details with them about my experience. Um, so we do have a bit of a problem there. So they're not making informed decisions. There's <laughs> these videos are so much fun to make because they're just so wrong. Um, it's easy to kind of apply all these, right? Um, so then we got another one, 206, maintaining confidentiality. <laughs> really? We are in a bar. There's, if you look closely on the bar, there's data sitting there on the sheet. There's people all around me. Now, I don't actually know these people. This is not a confidential environment. Um, I'm talking about an actual client. I'm talking about real people. It's happened to be my brother, but whatever. Um, we're, we're not violent. I don't, yeah, anyway, it's a, yeah. So, um, that's what else we we got um, 801. Um, so uh, avoiding false deceptive <laughs> um, statements, right? So, so we're, uh, public comments. I'm lying about all of it. I'm lying about my experience. I'm lying about what's going on. I'm lying about my ability to handle the things. I'm just like ba basically just creating a whole bunch of crap out there, right? Um, so th it's all becoming a mess. Um, I'm trying to think what else we got. Oh, uh, 805 testimonials. Um, now, I don't have somebody else doing a testimonial, but I'm kind of doing my own, right? I'm bragging about what I can do, what I can't do, uh, and that's that. That's totally against the ethical code, right? So we're not supposed to be doing that. Um, I know that sometimes people want to do those sorts of things, but it's just genuinely unethical. We let our work speak for itself. We don't have to get other people bragging about it. We don't have to do that. We just talk about our experience. We talk about the data. Um, so when we're in that one-on-one sort of environment with the client. So um, I think that concludes the first part of uh, the ethical violations here. And uh, hopefully you're going to stick around and come back for another video or five on uh, 